Assalamu alaikum. My name is Kimberly. My Islamic name is Hadija. I was born into a Catholic family. We were not devout, but that is how we practiced when there was a celebration. I spent time overseas where I was introduced to Islam and I reverted to Islam in 2017. I practice Sunnism. It's been six years since I did my Shahada and I only know one Arabic verse from the Quran. I use it every time I pray and I do get bored. I don't know what that verse means so it doesn't mean anything to me when I say it. Overall, I don't pray very often. I just find that being a white American or Western woman in Islam is a very lonely experience. I don't find that it's easy to get a community together that can help me learn the teachings of Islam. Um, mosques are mostly men for a number of reasons and the women that do come um, are usually first generation older Muslim women that don't speak a lot of English. Younger Muslims that do speak English do tend to be at work or school on Fridays and of course women do not pray while they're menstruating so we always have a group of younger women that aren't going to be there I also find that um, the interaction between women and men in Islam of course is um, a very special interaction and it's really preserved for familiar like within the family relationships so for me to go up to a man at the mosque and say hey I need your help it doesn't really work that way a lot of these men again are first generation immigrant men and they really don't understand the personality and characteristics of a of a Western woman. The fact that a Western woman can smile, um, talk to them, make eye contact depending on where they're from, it, it can often be misconstrued. Meanwhile, the Western woman doesn't really understand how her behavior is coming across. So um, looking to men isn't a real option for me right now. Um, I don't have familiar men at the mosques I go to. I did have, when I was in Afghanistan, the place that I was working actually made this like little thing for me to go pray in. It was like a little curtained area. They actually made it out of like PVC piping and curtains. And I could go in there and I loved it. I loved it. And I could be in the back of the room, curtained off, and I could play with them. And it really helped me to learn the ritual and hear the prayer. I did go home for a little while. And when I came back, while I was overseas, I went home. And when I came back, that little curtained off area had been taken over for storage. It was just like, Full of boxes and looking back I see that I could have myself gone to these people and said you know I really want that space for myself and I really want to pray but I didn't I just took it as like they didn't really think it was important enough for me to be there and um, that left me to go pray in my room it was a little counterproductive and I didn't really pray. Now, I spend a lot of time traveling for work and I tend to travel in very rural 
areas in America. Rural America is a Christian community. So, um, like where I am right now, my closest mosque is three hours from here. And that's three hours each way. I was in South Dakota for a year, just over a year. And that mosque was six hours away. Um, I did not go to the mosque in South Dakota. I also don't read Arabic. Um, I do try to get people, like I get Muslims who very beautifully and eloquently recite the Quran for me. And it's from their heart. I have no idea what they're saying. Sometimes I'll ask them to slow down. But a lot of times they don't seem to know how to slow down. So they just repeat it at the same pace. I don't know what they're saying. I'm quite unfamiliar with the sounds themselves. So I don't get a lot out of that. I'm not saying I don't appreciate it because I do. And those verses are often followed by an English translation from these people. And I love that. I really do. Um, it just doesn't really further me when I'm on my own trying to pray in Islam. I feel that like Ramadan is especially lonely for me. I think it's especially lonely for any woman that's not home with her family. Um, I find it to be that I'm like hungry and thirsty and alone which sounds like the perfect time to just go like, it's just me and Allah going through this together. But I don't know how to pray, so I will go through the motions. And during Ramadan, I always try to get my uh, uh, Fajr and my Isa prayer done, right? And I always try to pray first thing in the morning and last thing before I go to bed. And sometimes I'll get some of my other ones in there too. But it's always the same verse from the Quran. I don't feel that my heart is in it. And that's really how this video and my hope for a channel has come along. I am to a point where I feel completely um, disconnected to Allah and Islam. And um, I do try to live well. You know, I try to live well. There have been changes over six years. I used to have a lot of interest. I, um, over the last six years, I have gotten all interest out of my life other than my house. I pay cash or I use my credit card and I pay it off before interest can be accrued. I do get some interest in my savings account and I use that for charity. So that's one thing I've done. I also work really hard to not talk about people behind their backs. I know one of the verses in the Quran, because it stuck with me, mainly because it's something I've always done. It says, no good comes from speaking of people behind their backs, unless it is for good, for charity, for celebration. So. I do see that over and over again. The, the toxic atmosphere that comes when you talk with somebody about somebody when they're not there um, is palpable, right? Like it's tangible and you feel it. And it's, a, it's mean and it really brings a person down, right? So. Those are some of the things I've tried to do on my own, and I do try to be a good person. But we all know that the first pillar of Islam and the most important part of Islam is prayers five times a day, and I don't do that. Um, and I'm very close to leaving Islam and going back to Catholicism. You know, I said my Shahada in 2017, and it makes my heart as clean as a baby's, but uh, I don't leave behind my whole culture. And 
sometimes I do really miss it when everybody's celebrating, when they're all going through the same traditions, and I'm not. So it would be very easy for me to leave, but I don't want to. I made my Shahada and I made a commitment to worship through Islam, and that's why I brought this channel together. I thought it for one could hold me accountable, but I also was hoping that it would help me build a community. It could be men or women, um, or I should say women or men, that can give me some guidance, maybe connect me to some people who could help. I do have, I think it's called like the New Muslim Academy, something like that. It's an online academy for new Muslims. However, <laughs> I will say um, it's not really. The times I have interacted, everybody's been amazing and, and welcoming. However, everybody has been like Middle Eastern, Central Asian background where they have had more exposure to Islam, even if they were in a family that like stopped practicing. So they usually, like in an immediate family, they usually know something of it through the family. They knew more of the basic teachings and a lot of times they knew one or two verses of the Quran and what they meant. So I'm very grateful that it's there. It just feels like I can't catch up. And one of the reasons is that I'm 54. It's not as easy to learn new things as you get older, but I am willing to try. It really came to me the other day. I was watching YouTube, and I watched a video of a little boy. They call him Little Artie, and he's nine years old, and he starts rapping. Like his mother is his manager, and this little kid starts rapping. And he's dropping F-bombs and talking about sex. And he's calling women derogatory names. And then there was a second video where he can't read a note that somebody left for him. And I've gotten to the point where I feel like the whole world is in a situation where prayers are only answer that only Allah can fix it now so I almost feel like these things are out there as a way to bring us together and I wanted to pray and I realized I'm just really not good at it and I don't know what I'm praying about and I don't know what I'm saying so this is where we're at. Um, I also feel like we're just losing the beauty of Allah. So I used to, um, I worked in a prison and there was, and I got there during Ramadan, right? So I had like my cap on and stuff. And I was in the um, dangerous, mentally ill offenders unit. So basically the psych, the patients with severe, I mean the prisoners with severe psych issues. And there was one young man there, very sweet. His name was Muhammad Muhammad. He was very sweet, but he was also schizophrenic. So... He had caused some trouble is how he got there. And I said, hey, Muhammad, Muhammad, my name is Hadija. I'm also Muslim, um, you know, Ramadan Kareem. And he looked at me and he said, Allah made the sky and the oceans and the fish and the trees. And it's all so beautiful. And I said, 
Yes, it is. And I just feel like as um, as the world keeps going faster, that we don't see the miracles that Allah gives to us every day, you know, and we don't take time to show our appreciation. My mission for this channel is to actually learn more about Islam. And my vision for this channel is to collect a group of teachers, friends, and allies that help me along my Islamic journey and pray for a world that is quickly falling victim to a dopamine overload. Yeah, I actually had don't have my Quran anymore. Um, I did leave it overseas, and I didn't replace it. So I have ordered an English Quran. I hope to do some verse reading and I hope we're reciting and I hope to be able to pray together. Um, anyway, I do hope that you like and subscribe and leave comments. I'm not going to turn off my comment section really regardless of what anybody says, unless I find it offensive for first immigration Muslim women. But anyway, assalamu alaikum, like and subscribe, and I hope to upload once a week and vlog my journey. Thank you. Allahu Akbar,